Well, hello, man cavers. It is time. I have bitten the bullet. I managed to get some nuts to go on these bolts because I couldn't get new motor bolts from my local, local nut and bolt factor. He said that'd be a special order thing, and fair enough. I did find them online, but I used the three original bolts because we did have one original nut and bolt. I've used three. We're going to try it with one out. But she's all tight. I have wired up a wire with a plug. And what we're going to do is... Right. I think this switch is in the off position. I do not like... Why did somebody have this motor to pieces? Why was the saw scrapped? Why was the three bolts out of this motor and the motor was... In bits, I don't know. Why had that motor been split? Assuming there was a fault. The only fault I could find, if you watched the previous videos, was I cleaned out that um, centrifugal switch was in there. And one of the return springs, what nip it back in, one of them had popped off at one end. So that was only holding on with one, one spring one side. So the switch was trying to stay open. It wouldn't. There weren't enough spring pressure to pull it back in. Did I knock that spring off? Messing around with it before I noticed. Was that spring already like it? And that was why this motor wouldn't say it failed. But I'm sure that if that centrifugal switch was staying closed or would it be open i don't know but if that was staying where it should be pulling back in and it weren't it was staying open could that have caused the trip to throw or this motor not start at all i do not know anyhow so i cleaned them points up put that spring back on now as far as i can see everything's all right in there but i know very little about motors the videos i'll put on from you guys one guy said just check the uh, Live and you're neutral to make sure neither of them are going to ground. And when you try this, make sure there's an earth. So we've got a bit of thin three-core cable here. Probably isn't heavy enough, but I ain't got a heavy a bit at the minute. But just to test this motor, I'm sure this will be adequate. Now, this is how confident I am of my electrics. I've got the switch base on this side. So I am going to... <laughs> plug this in you'll be here on the tripod I'm going to be up near the doorway with a 10 foot stick to tap that switch down I don't want to be anywhere near that thing when I turn it on <sighs> I want to position it so I can see from the door though if it's running so I'm going to put it there and hopefully I can knock it with a stick I have a stick oh I spot a big one lying out there look that'll do and a pair of rubber gloves. I do not want to risk getting a nip. And I do not really want to be blowing the trip in the house. Because Mrs. Mancave will go pff, quite mad at me. Why are you doing in that kid? That's what she'll say. Why are you doing in that kid? And I'll say, playing. Right. This is where I find out. Oh. Right, the extension lead I'm plugging this into, this is switched off at the minute. So I'll be quite happy to put that there. So with my switch, with my long stick, I'm going to push the switch on at the wall, just in case it goes bang, and then we'll give it a try, and we'll see. Yeah, you can see. I might, well, hopefully I can tell by the door here at running, I'm sure. Let's see if this thing works without any further ado. Have I got ear defenders? Hmm. I don't think so. So, here we go. I have about an eight foot stick here, as you can see. Let's push the switch on at the wall. Any bangs? Oh, oh it's on at the wall and no bang. Let's bang this down. Uh. Hey! Is it going to blow up? Whoa, look at that. Whoa! The 
the motor seems to be working, guys. Ah! Oh, yes. Oh, ho, ho. Now that is brilliant. So whatever the problem allegedly was, I'm getting no belt off the damn thing. How am I going to... Nah. Nah. Well, all right. Yeah, oh, I don't like messing around with electric. Well, there you go. It appears our motor is working. Oh, you know what I'm going to do, don't you? We're going to get this motor back on that damn saw. Should we do that now in this one video? Yeah. How about can I find a hacksaw blade to put in it? Hmm. Right, we have our motor roughly, sloppily bolted back on. So I think we need to get the pulley and the belt back on. Now I've just noticed a little Allen grub in there, which weren't tightened before. So I found an Allen key that fits it. So well on, there you go, he's on. Now let's tighten up this Allen bolt a little. There you go. So let's tighten that little grub screw up. So let's now get the belt on. And then we can get the tension on this motor adjusted. So if I lift the motor right up. Let's get him up. And let's see if we can shoehorn this belt. Back on. Come on. Come on. Ah, you awkward little swine. All right, let's come this way with it then. We need to shoehorn this belt back on. There we go. All right, it's kind of back on. Wow, oh, I wondered why it weren't turning. That was hitting on the damn voice handle. There you go. So our belt appears. Ah, that's now. This belt is now putting itself fully home. Oh, yeah. Right, guys. I think I've fiddled with the motor. So let's have a look and see if this saw works. I ain't got a blade in her yet, but we just want to see if she will turn and do her thing. Oh, yes. Look at that. Oh, yeah, we're not rubbing on the motor now. Brilliant stuff. Look at that. Now, isn't that the dog's kuhanas? Oh, a hexy cut saw. Right, I have got to find a hacksaw blade and haul in that thing and see if we can cut a piece of metal. Ah. Right, guys, I have found some nice new hacksaw blades. Eclipse. Hope you can read this. There we go. High speed. Now, these are meant to be good blades. They've got a decent thickness to them. So we're going to put one of these in and see how it goes. Now I'm not, I think you just put this through here like so. Oh, I need to slacken them a bit more, I think. All right, that's that tight. And now I think our pin has loose this end. So let's tighten this up. Make sure I didn't pull on that blade out, which it isn't. Cool. There we go. All right, we're... that blade is tight. This is Man Cave's come to say hello. So hello. Hello. Oh, that's looking good. Ah, it's looking better, isn't it? Yeah. You haven't, you haven't seen it yet, have you? I haven't. You haven't. Are you going to start her up? Is she working? <laughs> 
my word. That's a contraption, isn't it? That's incredible. She's so smooth as well, isn't she? That's right? lovely, isn't it? So maybe I've got to get a bar in there to put more tension on the belt. Possibly. It's just trial and error, isn't it? Yeah. But I think that is perfect. I think the man's done good. Yeah, I think <laughs> she's working a treat. Our old vintage Hexica is working. Yay! Right. Another one brought back to life. Another one done. <laughs> Mr. Mancave, can what? I just say something? What? Can I just say thank you to everyone who supports us, who supports Mr. Mancave. I think he does brilliant work. I love even watching him. Believe it or not, I love hearing him speak as well. Oh my God. It makes me laugh. And he does it with all, all with a twinkle and a smile, <laughs> I have to say. But I just want to thank you all for all your support, your wishes, your good wishes, um, your help, your advice, um, you know, everything. Uh, we absolutely love you all. We really do. And we do. We really thank you for everything that you do for us. It's so much appreciated. And here's to the next one. Right, ta da! Alright, what we're gonna do now, before we go, there's the oil chamber. That's like your shock absorber. Now, you're meant to use, I think that website said 160 weight oil, which pretty much is impossible to find now. But I have read on there that people use 90 gear oil. I have found amongst my collection an old tin of Shell EP90 gear oil. So we're gonna dump some of that in this chamber and fill that chamber up with old oil that is cleaned out and see if it makes any difference. Right, that's three quarter full, so I'm assuming that isn't gonna snag out of there and give us a load of trouble and belch everywhere so let's lift the arm up drop this back in i need another gator on there we twist that and that allows it to go down i isn't doing a lot of dampening guys not at all it's like this oil is too too thin anyhow it's working it don't appear to be doing an awful lot of dampening but I'll retention that belt by putting a bar in between I think this bracket here and the motor you can get a bar in there and I'll really tension that belt up and it's not on the motor so I think we might be sort of what we're going to do now is this too much for this is a old better angle on she's crusty and dirty let's lift her so you lift this and you twist this thing and that like locks locks the saw up that's what this twisty knob is up here so we'll undo the vice now I don't know the capacity of exactly what this thing will cut. This is probably, to be honest with you, all it's going to want to do. If it'll even cut this. So let's put this down here. Nip him up. Or as much as we can nip a bit. Of cool. Yeah. There you go. She's nipped. So, with the belt tightened, is this going to work any better? I don't know. So, we'll lower the arm down. You twist this thing. Down she goes. <sighs> we'll put the saw on. See if that belt slip. No! Look at that! That is going through the angle on! Oh my word, that saw us fast! 
不着了。And we twist our little arm and that locks it again. Well, there you go. So the saw, I think, is now fully functioning. I don't know how thick that is. I don't know. Relatively thick stuff. I think that's as thick as this thing would want to cut. I know you guys are going to want to know exactly how thick it is. Let's get her on the calipers and see what it says. So let's zero that, go to millimetres. Let's see how thick this piece of angle is. Four mil. 3.96 mil. Bear in mind that is a rotten old bit. That's, if we come right in the middle, yeah. Yeah, four mil. So that's four mil angle. There you go, 4 mil, that's 45 mil angle. Yep, that's 45 mil angle. 4 mil thick. Perfect. That's about as thick a stuff as I'm ever going to want to cut. So I am over the moon with our hexi cut saw. I really am. I'm over the moon with it. Brilliant. Right, we're going to leave this video here. Thank you very, very much for watching, like, and subscribe. And yes, <laughs> I am over the moon with our hexi-cut drill bit. Drill bit, hexi-cut saw. This is the Kennedy hexi-cut. Bye-bye for now, guys. Ah.